I'm Daniel, and this is my wife, Gabby. Um, I was born and raised in Caracas, Venezuela, and I grew up in a Catholic family. Um, I, uh, my grandfather, from very early years of his life, was taught how to be a good Catholic, um, which rose a lot of questions to me, and then he passed along to uh, my dad, and by consequence, he passed it on to me. Um, I always knew that God existed. I always had, you know, present in my, li in my life that God is with you, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him. Um, at the time, it was, it was difficult to me because I didn't uh, feel that closeness, that spirit that invades you. I didn't have God present in my life. Um, I, one of the things I do remember from my early years of life is that I always had a Gideon Testament and I didn't really know what it meant. Hi everyone, I'm Gabby and my upbringing was uh, completely different from Daniel's. I was uh, born and raised in Havana, Cuba. I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, Cuba and so you know that the political climate there resulted in religion just being forbidden for a long time. And even when it wasn't, it was still ridiculed and shunned or just not practiced. And so I was brought up in a mainly atheist, completely, almost completely atheist family, everyone except for my mom. Uh, she did used to frequent Catholic churches. And so I was baptized and I even studied as part of a church for a bit. Um, um, as an adult, I moved to the Cayman Islands. I found my way back to um, a church, a Christian church this time, and I started volunteering with them again. I always felt that comfort going to church, but it was never about a relationship with God. I wasn't even sure if there was a God, if he existed, um, who he was, and it was really more about helping out and being part of the family and just the sense of uh, being part of that community. And so even though I used to pray every night since I was a kid, um, he was still the big question in my mind and I wasn't really sure who I was praying to or even if there was anyone listening. Um, at some point I moved to the U.S. Daniel and I met and fast forward to August the 20th, 2021. We were driving um, on a highway in Austin, Texas. We had recently decided to buy what would be our first home. And so we found one um, a lot quicker than that we anticipated. So this was a particularly crazy day because um, like when anything new happens, you're running and we were on the phone with our uh, sales agent on the way to meet the lender to sign the contract. He was uh, having lunch sitting next to me in the car because he never got a chance to eat. And so there was a lot happening, and that's when I felt to notice that the light in front of me had turned red, and so I bumped into the truck in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, um, this incident resulted only in a damage in the taillight and our side mirror. Nothing major, every, everyone was safe. Nothing uh, major happened except for that day um, it was a calling for us, it was a stop. We uh, ran into this uh, elderly couple and we met this gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Sam Showquist and his, uh, <laughs> and his beautiful bride, <laughs> Linda Showquist. Um, and that's how we first met. Uh, we went on the side of the road, we inspected the damages and we exchanged some information. So it took me a minute to get out of the car, I'll admit. I was really out of it and nervous. Uh, but I eventually got out, and so I walked over to Sam and Linda, and uh, just apologizing over and over, as you can imagine, just being so sorry for what had happened. And Sam, of course, being the gentleman that he is, he just kept reassuring me and saying, you know, it's, it's okay, luckily no one was hurt. Uh, and so he asked uh, Linda to pass him a couple of uh, Gideon Testaments, and he just proceeded to share the gospel right there on the side of a road of a very busy highway in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> um, and then he proceeded to tell us about his church home, and he invited us to come with him. 
So Daniel was working that particular Sunday, so he wasn't able to join. Um, but I did, and I sat with uh, the Sam and Linda and their family, and we just started attending church um, every Sunday after that, and that was just the beginning of our friendship. And I guess we just knew that uh, we have been talking about finding a church um, for some time, and we just never got around to doing that. But then I think both of us knew pretty much at the same time that there was a reason for that accident and that we just needed to um, find out more. A couple of weeks after the uh, minor incident, um, <laughs> Sam and Linda invited us over to their home, and um, we just started to um, enjoy our lunch, uh, have us some time together, some fellowship, and uh, they were there with their friends, the Millers. Um, and we continue to share stories. They share their pers uh, personal testimonies. And uh, we started talking about the gospel. And suddenly, Sam comes with, with, with two more uh, testaments. And we were like, okay, definitely, okay. So he um, rose the question if we were ready to accept Christ. And immediately we, res we responded, yes. Yeah, so at first, I don't think either one of us really understood the meaning of the decision we had just made. But then over the weeks that follow, just God started speaking to us and he started showing us. And not only were we blessed with a new community and family and the church that we still call home, but um, just we changed, our relationship with each other changed. And just, you know, it was as if... God had always been there for us. We had just not been listening, and we had not li been living um, by his way. And once we started doing that and started surrounding ourselves with, with the right people, asking the right questions, he was just more than happy to show us. And I think at that point, we really understood the meaning of that decision, and we really did feel that we have been saved and that because of his incredible grace, we have an eternity with him and in him. So um, the life that we're living now, we um, have enough confidence to say that it's only possible in, in God and His glory. Because we got married, we're building a new house, and I got a new job at the church that we call home. Um, so we're so blessed and happy that His plans and His commitment to our story changed our, our lives completely. Um, and we will be forever grateful for this uh, car accident. Um, so um, I would like to encourage each and one of you um, always be ready to share the good news because you don't know what impact what, what lives you're going to impact um, just hopefully that is not by, an, by an accident <laughs> thank you thank you